Well, hello, everybody on the TDD report. <laughs> you don't normally see me here. I'm normally on the ITL. Actually, thank you to Sir Suburban Rider. You've already known that the, uh, he was sending me, Muzzle Mike, out a, the uh, Wise webcam. You know, I just got it in the mail a little bit ago. It's right here. Um, I did the unboxing on my channel. So it's already been opened. It's only opened up the box once. But yeah, I'll be doing, uh, from my channel, I will be actually doing a quick video, actually uh, longer extensive videos on this, but I will be reporting back to Suburban Rider for the TDD report, hopefully, if he wants to use it. Um, how it's going and how this and that stuff. I will be able to doing the setup and everything on this thing. Uh, this box here, it comes up, there's two boxes inside this little teeny main box, excuse me, in the main box. This one here has the power ribbon cord, the USB power ribbon cord and the wall adapter for it, which is right here and right here. I'm doing, trying to do this quick and all respect for Suburban Ride, for you guys on the TDD report. That's why I'm having two going on, but that way my channel, I go a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and quickly do that. Then you got the instruction booklet. And yeah, I got everything in the back in the box. Uh, uh, I did lose, I'm sorry about hitting my microphone. I did, came with double-sided sticky. I came with, here's the actual camera itself. It's I me, mean, it's really small. Came with a metal plate on it for it. That way you can actually mount in, in basically anywhere you want by using the double-sided sticky tape with the metal thing. It has a magnet on the bottom. This is a 1080p camera. Um, it's got it's got night vision. It's got audio both ways on it, so you can hear what's going on, and you'll, you you can talk to what's going on, anybody that's in front of it. It's got the uh, it's actually got a USB power uh, port in the back, full size. That way you can daisy chain a few of these together, along with the power port for itself. Um, yeah, this is also detects for uh, smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. The good thing is it's a cheap camera. You can get these as low as 20 bucks plus shipping and handling. From what I understand, you got them from Amazon, they're like $29, $30. Um, but yeah, we'll see how well this does. So Urban Rider couldn't do it because of his, his equipment, just couldn't handle it because of the, uh, the version of his, his Android where hopefully mine will work out just fine because I got, I got a little bit newer. But we'll see how this is. This works out. i like to thank Suburban Rider for sending this to me. And uh, we'll, like I said, we will have fun with it. Uh, thank you very much and thank you everyone for viewing me on the uh, TDD report. This is Muzzle Mike signing out. Thank you, Muzzle Mike, for uh, that introduction to the TDD report. And this is the TDD report for May 26, 2018. So we'll be hearing from Muzzle Mike about how that camera works out. It didn't work out for me because I didn't have the equipment to be able to give it a fair test. So hopefully we'll see how see how it works out for the WISE camera. And you see, there's my kitty cat. She always has to be part of the TDD report. So anyway, first up from... Oh, no, this one I found myself. The next one's up from my friend Chris P. This one's from Popular Mechanics. NOAA's new weather satellite has a cooling problem. That's the uh, GOES-17 satellite. I talked about that, that they launched the satellite. Well, there's a little bit of a problem with it. Its uh, cooling system is not functioning normally. They're hoping it's a software glitch, but it may be a hardware glitch. They don't really know now. But they are not able to obtain the temperature. They need minus 350 degrees Fahrenheit for the infrared sensor to be able to work to give at its best ability to take pictures of the earth and weather systems. They can still use it for about 12 hours a day. I'm guessing what they're, they're meaning is probably when it's not exposed to sunlight and it's in shade, it'll cool down enough to be able to use the infrared part, but without having its own cooling system functioning during the times it's in the sun, it's going to heat up real fast. So it's kind of halfway working, so it's not like it's a total loss. 12 hours a day they can use it, but who knows, you know. We're gonna, we're, they're going to see what happens. This last update I got was from one day ago, so as of uh, the 25th, they do not know for sure what the problem is and how to fix it right at this time, but not totally dysfunctional, just kind of crippled a little bit. 
This one is from my friend Chris P. from Gibraltar. <clears throat> this is from Forbes.com, and I've talked about this many, many times. In fact, I've even talked about um, Pluto and Clyde Tombaugh, but they're talking about that scientists want to possibly make Pluto a planet again, and the uh, scientist that sent the probe to Pluto and another scientist together with him have worked on an idea of their, what they want to be able to uh, make into a planet. That's Alan Stern and David Grinspoon, authors of a new book on the New Horizons mission and the planet Pluto. So their idea would actually raise us up to a total of 115 planets because they would consider any body large enough to pull itself into a basically spherical shape and orbiting around the sun rather than orbiting around another nearby round body, which would make it a moon, would be considered planets. Now, they're, they're calling this in the um, headlines here like, uh, you won't like the consequences of making Pluto a planet again. I'd like to ask from you guys in the comments, would it really matter for you if we, instead of having eight planets switched to, or nine planets like we had when I was a kid, we switched to eight planets, would it really be a big deal if they said we had 115 planets? If there's actually round or spherical bodies rotating around the sun as the main orbit, so what if there's 115? I mean, we got over 100 countries, and people don't, you know, bitch about that, that we should have less countries because it's too many to deal with. So, yeah, the one thing about when they did this last one where they demoted Pluto was they said that the uh, object had to obviously rotate around the sun as its main orbit. It had to be basically spherical in shape, and it had to also clear its own its uh, orbit of any other um, debris. Uh, I don't know to what extent, maybe 90% or more or something like that. I forget the exact extent, but if, uh, they they claim that Pluto did not do that enough to be able to consider a planet. And some people, uh, yeah, some people actually argue that Pluto probably resembles a giant comet more than anything else. In fact, there's also another article out there talking about that. But um, So anyway, I would like to get you guys' thoughts about that. What do you think about the definitions of a planet? Would it really bother you if we went from eight planets back up to 115? We went down from 9 to 8, back up to 115. Would that really make a difference? I don't really think so. It's nice, too, because this article talks about other things, too. It's like, why don't we also, besides our sun, why don't we define, because we call them that, um, objects rotating around other stars that are farther away than, than our sun? So, Or what about a planet that's escaped from the solar system because it's not with the solar system anymore and it you know, escaped and it's just wandering through space, but it was at one time uh, you know, an object rotating? Do we not call it a planet? So anyway, I would like to comments down below. Thanks again for Muzzle Mike for taking on the uh, camera to try to see what the quality is like on it and giving it a fair test. And I will talk to you guys next week.